This video provides a guide for centres on how to determine your teacher assessed grades, along with grade intervals where necessary for City and Guild's technical qualifications in 2021. First, I'd like to highlight this table from our published guidance, which is available on the website, and it highlights the various assessment components for technical qualifications and their requirements for submission. As you can see, the submission deadline for all component grades is the 18th of June 2021. Please take a look at the website and review the tag timeline for technical qualifications, which provides further detail on the submission window. You'll also see within this table that where evidence is available to support a grade, teacher assessment grades should be submitted for the theory exam, the synoptic assignment, and for any centre assessed components which contribute to the rules of combination for the technical qualification. For the theory exam and the synoptic assignment, grade intervals are also required. We'll explain this further later during this video. And also for the theory exam and the synoptic assignment, a sample of evidence will be needed to be provided. For the centre assessed components, grade intervals and evidence won't be required. It's only the teacher assessed grades that's needed. Some technical qualifications, such as level three land based qualifications, have a mandatory work experience unit and there's no need to submit a tag for this unit. And likewise for the employer involvement unit for all technical qualifications. These units have been waived this year and students will automatically be issued with these units. You're probably already familiar with this graphic, which shows an overview of the tag process and the six steps which support you with determining your teacher assessed grades. We'll now look at this in a little more detail. Step one is the initial review. We recommend that you first complete an initial review of your students to identify how much and the content of the teaching, learning and assessment that needs to take place for each student to enable there to be sufficient evidence to determine your teacher assessed grade. Tags should only be determined where there is sufficient evidence to make a valid and reliable judgment. Now, note that this is different to the approach taken last year for centre assessment grades, CAGS, in 2020. These were a prediction of the grade which students would most likely have achieved had they sat their assessment as normal. But this year, tags must be determined on your actual assessment evidence covering the knowledge, understanding or skills. That is, that the evidence must be valid for that particular assessment. Step two is collecting the evidence. So you should now collect evidence of the student's performance to support the determination of your tags. You may draw in existing records and available evidence from any point in the course. Take into consideration the various types of evidence which could contribute towards the determination of the tag. You may use evidence of a student's performance from any point across the course of study, provided you are confident that it reflects the student's own work. Ideally, the evidence used will be consistent across the class or cohort. However, in some cases that might not be possible where students have missed some teaching or assessments. We think it's important that you consider the specific circumstances under which teaching and learning has taken place for the students within the cohort. Now, while we have identified some potential sources of evidence, we won't prescribe the evidence that you must use. Ultimately, it's your judgment of a student's performance and you should use whichever evidence supports that. You should make sure that students are aware of the evidence that will form the basis of their final grade. It may be appropriate to provide feedback on evidence to the students, however, proposed tags should not be discussed. So when you're collecting evidence for the synoptic assignment, the synoptic assignment material itself will provide the best evidence to support the determination of tags. All synoptic assignments have been updated to include guidance around adaptations that will mitigate the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. And this can be found at the beginning of the task instructions for centres section of the synoptic material. In order to ensure that evidence produced using synoptic assignments is robust and reliable, we recommend that they are completed under the levels of control detailed in the qualification or assessment materials. Some tasks within the synoptic assignment can be taken remotely rather than in supervised conditions. For example, where the student is required to produce a report using their research. And where this adaptation is used, centres must ensure the authenticity of the evidence presented. An example of how to do this would be through a validation discussion. 
And this discussion doesn't need to be marked and shouldn't inform any marking decisions, nor does it need to be uploaded as evidence to us. Some tasks may be observed remotely by the assessor, and if this adaptation is used, it's important that salient performance evidence is recorded and the skills being demonstrated can be clearly observed. Now, centres are advised that teaching, learning and assessment should continue as far as is possible and if it's safe to do so. Therefore, completed synoptic assignments with or without the permitted adaptations could be used as the sole evidence to form the basis for a tag. Where it's not possible to complete the synoptic assignment in full, however, with or without the adaptations, then centres can use a range of evidence that maps clearly to the gaps in assessment. And this may be evidence through formative assessment, perhaps a demonstration and performance of skills based activities, previous or other assessment or qualification achievement. It could be looking at the results of any completed optional or mandatory centre assessments from year one or year two. It could be the relevant evidence from centre synoptic assignment tasks that have not been fully completed. It could be relevant evidence from other centre assessed components that have not been fully completed or submitted or you could be looking at the overall student performance, the classwork, homework, any internal tutor assessment and progress data, perhaps, or any other records of student performance over the course of study. Now, centres will be required to provide a sample of evidence that was used to determine the tag as part of our external quality assurance monitoring and sampling. And the evidence for occupational skills and standards will need to be demonstrated. It's very important that we see that. Now, if there's insufficient evidence available, the completion of the assessment should be delayed if possible. Centres may need to prioritise student needs for progression. So when it comes to collecting evidence for the exam component, well, the spring and summer dated exam series for 2021 have both been cancelled. And so centres are required to submit a tag for the exam component. In order to determine this tag, sufficient learning must have taken place and sufficient evidence must be available. Additional assessment support materials are available on the website and can be used by centres to assist with the determination of the tag. This resource may be used under supervised conditions in class or remotely or in unsupervised conditions at home, but the centre must ensure authenticity, for example, through a validation discussion with students and a signed declaration needs to be retained as evidence. These additional assessment support resources are published to the specific qualification web pages on the website. It's not compulsory that centres use this resource, but it is highly recommended. And we also encourage centres to make use of available technologies to ensure supervised conditions. Centres can also take into consideration other types of evidence that could contribute towards the determination of the exam tag, such as results from any completed existing past papers, previous exam results, for example, any resitting students or those with relevant smaller qualifications, any re relevant evidence from any other centre assessed components that have not been fully completed or submitted, any formative or practice exam or assessment results. Again, you could be looking at the overall student performance, their coursework, their homework, your internal tutor assessment progress data, and any other records of student performance over the course of study. So now that you've collected the evidence, the third step in the process is evaluating the quality of that evidence. And on looking at the evidence collected for each student, you should consider the quality and subsequent weighting of that evidence when using it to determine their tags. So weighting should be established by considering factors such as the assessment objectives covered, whether it has been authenticated, the conditions the evidence was produced under, for example, a sample exam sat under exam conditions, whether it's been internally quality assured, the content covered, and how closely it aligns with the design and format of the summative assessment. The fourth step in the process is now assigning the grades. So when sufficient evidence has been gathered and evaluated, you'll then need to make a judgment on each student's performance based on the range of evidence that you've been able to collect. In coming to your decision, you as tutors should use your professional judgment to balance the range of evidence available for each student. Centres should aim to use high quality evidence that clearly relates to the specification in terms of both content and assessment. The judgment should be based on actual evidence rather than potential performance. 
Now, you must do this for all assessment components, including the synoptic assignment, theory exam, and any centre assessed components. Now, using the simplified example on screen, we have a cohort of 17 students. Now, let's assume we're looking at the evidence that you're using to mark their synoptic assignment. And using our marking grids, you'll need to use your judgment to assign each student a grade. And the grade you assign will reflect how the student has performed against the assessment objectives. In this case, evidence supports five students to be placed within the distinction grade, three students within the merit grade, five students a pass, and four students a fail. These students will next need to be differentiated further into grade intervals for the synoptic assignment and the exam component tags. So next we need to differentiate the students into their grade intervals and just a reminder here that grade intervals are actually only necessary for the exam component and the synoptic assignment for technical qualifications. Intervals are not needed for any of the centre assessed components. So for the synoptic assignment and exam components, now that we've assigned a grade based on the evidence available to us, we can start to look at individual performance of each candidate within that grade. And we need to differentiate students into grade intervals to indicate their level of performance within that grade based on their evidence. Right. Using marking grids and marking sheets, tutors and assessors will need to consider whether the student has performed and can be marked at the high, middle or lower end of the pass and merit grade or at the highest, high, middle or lower end of the distinction grade. So we can see that there are four grade intervals for distinction. These are highest, which is D4 high, which is D3, middle, which is D2, and low, which is D1. For pass and merit grades, there are only three grade intervals, high, which is either P3 for pass or M3 for merit, middle, which can be P2 or M2, and low, which is P1 or M1. Students don't need to be differentiated into grade intervals for a fail grade. This graphic shows how we can view this as a sliding scale of performance with P1 being the lower performance of the pass grade right through to D4, which is the highest performing distinction grade. So using the same cohort of 17 students where we assigned their grade for a synoptic assignment, Let's differentiate them now into their grade intervals. In our example, we had five distinction students, three merit students, five pass students, and four students who were marked as fails. We don't have to assign grade intervals for any of the fail grades, so we start with the students who achieved a pass. After marking their evidence and assessing their performance, of the five students, we have one lower performing student one middle performing student and three higher performing students within this grade. The one lower performing student may be differentiated into the P1 grade interval. The middle performing student may be differentiated into the P2 grade interval and the three higher performing students may be assigned the P3 grade interval. We can then complete the same process for the merit and the distinction grade. Remember, there are four grade intervals for the distinction grade and three for merit and pass. Our example shows that grade intervals don't have to be evenly distributed in this case for the pass grade. Now, step five in the process is internally quality assuring these grades. Now, centres must ensure that tags are subject to internal quality assurance to ensure all staff involved have a common understanding of the process and are making consistent and valid assessment decisions. This will involve effective standardisation activities throughout the process, for example, during the evidence collection, the review of evidence and the assessment of the evidence, etc. These activities should include agreeing on the weighting of evidence for an assessment, a common understanding of the grade descriptors which are provided, and collectively working through the evaluation of evidence and assessment of evidence process. This may also involve looking at comparative centre data for assessments and qualifications from previous years where that's applicable to sense check the performance levels and the tag for a student should be agreed by all tutors involved in the delivery. Now, tags must be cross-checked against results for previous cohorts at the centre who took assessments for the same qualification in previous years 
And this is to provide an indication that tags overall are not overly lenient or harsh by comparison with those results from previous years. Where there is a significant difference in the grade distribution compared to previous years, then it needs to be explained. Centres should be confident that the work produced is a student's own and that the student has not been given inappropriate levels of support to complete it, either in the centre or at home. And tags must therefore be authenticated and signed off by the head of centre as part of the submission process. This will be via the head of centre declaration within our CPA form and at the point of submission. Internal quality assurance processes will be reviewed as part of our external quality assurance monitoring and centres will be required to provide a sample of evidence that was reviewed and assessed. So the final step in the process is step six, and that's submitting the grades. So the teacher assessed grades will need to be submitted to us at City and Guilds, along with a sample of evidence used to demonstrate how the tags have been determined and that you have followed the correct process. The evidence which is used to support a tag must be retained by you at the centre until 12 months after the date of issue of the result or the conclusion of any appeal in relation to that result, whichever is the later. So we will be undertaking monitoring and sampling of tags as part of our external quality assurance activities this year to confirm the validity and reliability of results. And that involves looking at your internal quality assurance processes the process followed for the determination of grades, the samples of student evidence and the centre outcomes and volumes in comparison to previous years. And just a reminder here that around sharing details of tags with students, the centre should avoid sharing those details with, with students or parents and carers until the published result date. However, where appropriate, you may share details of the evidence that has been used to determine those tags. OK, we've come to the end of the video, but just a reminder here that help and support is available through our quality team and the email address to contact them is technicals.quality at cityandguilds.com or you can give them a call on 0300 303 5352. Thanks very much for listening. Bye bye.